Commander-in-Chief of Ukrainian Armed Forces Oleksandr Sersky has said that Russia has lost 17,819 troops since the start of Ukraine's cross-border incursion into Russia's Kursk region on August 8. Some 6,662 Russian troops have been killed, 10,446 other injured and 711 Russian servicemen have been taken hostage since the start of hostilities in Kursk. Sersky made the remarks in a war briefing on Friday. Russia also suffered heavy losses in terms of military hardware as 45 tanks 256 armored combat vehicles, 565 units of automotive equipment, 99 artillery systems and 5 multiple launch rocket systems belonging to Russia were destroyed in Kursk region since the start of hostilities there, Sersky stated. The military official also denied Kremlin's claims about surrender of 2,000 Ukrainian troops in Kursk. Sersky said that Vladimir Putin's recent remarks voiced at the BRIC summit about the encirclement of Ukrainian troops in the Kursk region does not correspond to reality. This is outright misinformation and does not reflect the real situation. Sersky said Ukrainian troops continue active operations in Kursk region, destroying Russian combat potential for the third month in a row. The military official thanked Ukrainian servicemen for endurance and true courage in the direction of Kursk. Earlier, on the same day, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said his country was using Kursk as a buffer zone on Russian territory that protects Ukraine from Russian attempts to expand the war in the east of the country. On October the 10th, Russian occupiers from the 155th Separate Marine Brigade captured a group of Ukrainian UAV operators in Kursk region and shot them. Ukrainian Marines from the 501st Marine Battalion counter-attacked and avenged the defenders. As Forbes writes, Ukrainian fighters in several M113 armored personnel carriers, led by a pair of T-64 tanks, attacked along the main road and ran past Zeleny Shlyak, where the tragic events took place. The T-64s released smoke for cover and fired their 125mm cannons, hitting at least one Russian vehicle. A Ukrainian drone recorded five enemy casualties. The 501st Marine Battalion is not the only Ukrainian unit seeking revenge for Kursk, where powerful Ukrainian forces invaded on August the 6th, quickly capturing a salient of several hundred square kilometers. Three elite Ukrainian brigades, the 82nd and 95th Airborne Assault Brigades and the 47th Mechanized Brigade, also counter-attacked the 155th Marine Brigade. The publication notes, the 95th Airborne Assault Brigade cornered a platoon of Russian Marines and destroyed them with tanks, drones, missiles and mines. 30 of the enemy were killed. The publication adds that for the 501st Marine Battalion, this revenge is also a mission of atonement because it was part of the Ukrainian garrison in Crimea. When the Ukrainian armed forces lacking weapons left the occupied peninsula, only 64 Marines from the battalion joined them while hundreds remained. In the first month of the full-scale Russian invasion, the restored battalion held the defense of Mariupol but was defeated for the second time. In 2023, it was restored again and sent into battle. In August of this year, the 501st Battalion entered the Kursk region. Blooded on three sides by the Ukrainian army, airborne forces and marines, the 155th Marine Brigade is in trouble, like Ukraine's 501st Marine Battalion. The Russian Brigade has been destroyed and rebuilt several times during Russia's 32-month war against Ukraine. It could happen again. The Russian Marines who executed Ukrainian drone operators are bastards and rabid dogs, Ukraine's airborne forces say, Forbes writes. As it is added, 
for the Ukrainian Armed Forces fighters. The destruction of this brigade is not only a vital imperative, it is personal. Ukrainian Foreign Minister Andriy Sibia noted that Russians are increasingly executing Ukrainian military personnel. He called on the ICC to do at least something to stop this. There is a loud scandal in the ranks of Russian Z patriots. The commander of the Chechen Special Forces, Akhmet, accused Russian soldiers of serious crimes against residents of the Kursk region. He made a frank statement in an interview with Russian propagandist Maxim Kalashnikov. Aladinov, responding to the claim that Kadyrovites are engaged in looting and other crimes in the combat zone, lashed out at the Russian armed forces. He claims that the Russian army commits many more crimes. I am currently in the Kursk direction. I immediately went to the head of the Kursk Region Ministry of Internal Affairs and asked questions, what problems do you have with Akhmet? He smiled and said, 187 crimes have been committed by the military on our territory. These are murders, rapes and others. None of these crimes were committed by fighters of the Akhmet unit, Aladinov said. In fact, he acknowledged the disintegration of the Russian army. His revelations provoked a violent reaction from Russian Z patriots. The leader of the Kadyrovites was accused of discrediting the Russian armed forces. Odessa collaborator Igor Dimitriev also spoke out. He asked what crimes the Russian armed forces are committing in the captured territories of Ukraine, if they do not even spare the residents of their own Kursk region. Their Apti Aladinov gives such discredit that no liberal can do it. He says that Russian servicemen in the Kursk region committed 187 crimes against the civilian population. This is in two months on a small patch of native land. And on a large territory without a law enforcement system in two and a half years? Wrote the traitor of Ukraine. He stated that in the current situation, the Ukrainians' reluctance to have anything in common with the so-called Russian world seems entirely reasonable. Ukraine's incursion into Russia's Kursk region is now entering its third month, with scores of settlements still firmly under its control. The operation marked the first time foreign troops entered Russian territory since World War II, embarrassing the Kremlin and proving to Kiev's backers and the rest of the world that Ukraine's military was not perpetually on the back foot. Some nine weeks later, Ukraine's advance has stalled, and neither side has made major gains or counterattacks in recent days.